Good, 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 good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm John George, candidate for the 16th Congressional. Uh, my wife Susan is also here. Uh, Joe Bachman, I'll take that for the support. I also want to thank you for being here this evening and uh, for you taking time from your busy schedules to, uh, to listen to the candidates. Uh, I had a very interesting day at work today. Uh, I, I still work. Uh, I'm an executive director of the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit on the North Side. I'm responsible for uh, education of uh, 125,000 children in 22 school districts. And today was the first day of school for Head Start children and pre-K counts children. So three, four, and five year olds from some of the most impoverished homes in Norristown that you can imagine. And they came to school today and you should see them look at their eyes. Uh, happy, smiling, you know, have a great day. Parents in tears, tears of joy, tears of their children who never had pre-K education before, now have it. Because I created that program three years ago for them. Just as I created programs here in the and the and in Pottstown, okay, in Norristown. But there's also a mixed emotion there, because just as there's tears of joy, families stop me time and time again and said, are my children safe? Are they going to come and take them away? And I had multiple questions there, and I had to assure them that yes, your children are safe here. Okay, because DACA does not apply. Okay, we will protect your children. Now, they asked these questions because President Trump knew yesterday to release DACA and plans to get rid of it in six months. And, and he called that, and actually Attorney General Sessions says, this is compassionate. Okay. It's, he actually called it compassionate. And then Trump said, he said, I love these people. The same people he plans to get rid of in six months, he, he loves. Well, you, you know, my favorite book says, Love Thy Neighbor. You know, people say, why are you running for Congress? Because my explanation or definition of love thy neighbor is fundamentally opposed to President Trump's interpretation of love thy neighbor. Very, very different. His is cruel, his is inhumane, and his is unjust. Okay, and that's what I meant for Congress. I was born in Pittsburgh area, uh, grew up well in mine, and my family struggled, despite their hard work. Uh, we needed public assistance. We were on food stamps. There are 44 million people on food stamps today, half of them are children. And President Trump was trying to cut that program off of them. And I went off to college, and because of what came from my, my background, I needed student loans to get through this program. Same programs that President Trump is supposed to eliminate. And Lloyd Swunker sits there in silence and says nothing. And I, I need those student loans and I need those student assistance. And I can't imagine where it would be today if President Trump was president when I was a child. But anyway, I got my teaching certification. I became a teacher of children with disabilities for about for six uh, years. I uh, went off to the University of Pittsburgh, got my master's degree and my doctorate degree in education. And I found myself in Washington, D.C. doing education policy work. I did that for a few years and found a way to Harrisburg, working for the Pennsylvania Department of Education, doing the education policy work. Eventually, I found me in uh, Lancaster 11 and IU 13, um, where I was responsible for Canada Director of Special Education, responsible for thousands and thousands of children with disabilities. And I saw firsthand what would happen if those families and those children lose their Medicaid funding. It would devastate those children, families, and in some cases, it would kill those families. It would literally. I went to then and shortly thereafter became a superintendent of the Warwick School District. And you may remember in 2007, there was a high profile racial incident. Okay, we see CNN News, Fox News, all the works. Um, we had a, a number of uh, uh, self contained racists who were harassing a group of African American students, uh, and that became a major event. Uh, and I didn't deal with that. When I had the Confederate flag, and I was the first and only superintendent of Pennsylvania to ban the Confederate flag, and I did that in 2007. Um, and I went on to uh, uh, this, you know, have, have a town hall meeting, and I stood in front of a community of women, and I said, racism is evil, and it's hateful, and has no place in our, in our community. Shortly thereafter, I became the executive director right here at Brooks County Intermediate Unit, uh, position I had for over six and a half years. Uh, and during that time, I saw the school district record literally fall apart in front of my eyes. Uh, the, the, what seemed to be almost like corruption, Student achievement falling, CNN declaring it was the poorest district in the United States, um, and then ultimately ran themselves into a $25 million budget deficit. At that point, the state of Pennsylvania decided they were going to take the state school district over and turn it into one big charter school to privatize it. That was their plan. And now I'm the government court. I had a different plan. I worked with our congressional leaders. I worked with Judy Schmeich, I worked with Kelly Drum, I worked with Mark Ross. And yes, I work with Joe Pitts, because uh, he's the congressman of the times. I work with both Republicans and Democrats, 
and the five university presidents, and every business leader in this community, and multiple other citizens. We put together a coalition. We went down to the government and said, let we, let, let BCIU, the Brooks Community, run the school district instead of the state. Education these children is too important to take over state control. Because we know what happens when the state takes it over. They, they felt just as bad as, uh, in fact, in some cases, worse. So I became a superintendent. I volunteered, and I did my job as executive director. I also became the acting superintendent of the Irving School District, and we solved that problem. And in one year, we took a $25 million budget deficit and turned it into a $20 million fund balance. We repaired buildings, we started out with achievement programs, and today, and then I turned around my heart to live with me, who's a superintendent today, and ready to become far better today than it has over the decade. Now, my resume, I'm very proud of it, and you can go look it up. It's public, it's out there for everybody to see. I think I have a very a good track record of accomplishments. But you know, running $225 million budgets, supervising 10,000 people, running programs for over hundreds of thousands of children, okay, that, that's hard work, I understand that. But that's not necessarily what leadership is. You know, that's only part of leadership. See, leadership is also a place to tell some other things. Some people think leadership is how many votes you got in the prior election. Some people think leadership is how many endorsements you claim to have. Okay. Some people think leadership is how much money you raise. That's not the kind of leadership I'm talking about. The kind of leadership I'm talking about is spending 35 years of your life fighting for the rights of individuals with disabilities. The leadership I'm talking about is spending 35 years of your life fighting for people in poverty. Okay. Putting education programs and workforce development programs together for them. Because we know that education is the only way out of poverty. We know that. Yet we turn around and dismiss it. Leadership is building Head Start programs and pre-K count programs in communities where none of them ever existed before. Leadership is standing up to racists and saying, yes, racism is evil, or it is hateful, or we're not going to tolerate it. In fact, we're going to put a coalition together of multiple organizations, such as human rights commissions and often civil rights and NAACP. And we're going to build a community where every individual is recognized for their self-worth. And we don't care what they're racist. What their nationality is, their ethnicity, their religion, or their sexual orientation. But this community is going to be welcoming to everyone. Okay, that's the leadership. The leadership is going to the government and say, you will not throw this school district away and turn it into privatization for 18,000 children, most of Latino. We're going to put a coalition together, we're going to take over the school district, we're going to solve this problem, we're going to protect public education for those kids. Okay, leadership. Is standing up. You see something wrong, you stand up, you speak up, and you take action. It's exactly what Roosevelt refuses to do. Okay. Leadership is always doing the right thing, not what's popular. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you send me to Washington, D.C., I will fight for you just as I fought for children and adults in this community for 35 years. I will fight to make sure that your rights are protected. Okay. I will fight to make sure that. Minimum wage is increased. Okay, the most vulnerable citizens will be protected. That you have clean air and you have clean environments. And racism will be eliminated. We will not tolerate it. We will not tolerate prejudice or bias. We will make sure that we're going to pick up 22 million people for health care. Okay, we'll make sure we preserve and protect public.